Hey guys, in this video, we'll quickly go over the Heidel Ball 2024 and give a fast rundown. We'll do another video going more in depth, but this video will be more of a quick overlook of what happened. The most important thing for most players is of course the free items given out. The code for this Heidel Ball is Ball Held in Heidel. That gives two J Hammers and a Choose Your Outfit box. PA is also giving out login rewards and a free Pen Black Star on June 26. The Pen Black Star is used to craft the new Sovereign weapons that we'll talk about later. The next most important thing that they released is the update schedule for the future. All servers are getting the Jordine Saga update which is a remaster of Serendia and Calpheon main story quest on June 26. We are also getting Arena of Solaire and the new class Doza on July 3rd. Doza can be played on Global Labs early if you're interested in that. On July 10th, we are getting the new summer outfit. On July 14th, War of Roses is returning. On July 24th, we are getting the new summer event. Most importantly, on August 7th for Korea, we are getting Land of the Morning Light in Seoul, and this will be released on global servers after localization. With Land of the Morning Light 2, we get the new Sovereign weapons and a 5-man shrine bosses that we'll talk about later in this video. After that, we have new updates that don't have a specific time. We have the new guild trait system, Dekia 2, new accessories, and hardcore seasons. After that, in the far future, the BDO devs talked about exploring the new Mountain of Eternal Winter 2, Demon Lands north of Valencia, and finally going into Magnus to explore the past BDO. Now, some of these things are pretty simple or don't have a lot of structure to it, but in this TLDR video, we're going to dive a bit deeper into the new things that are happening in Land of the Morning Light 2, including the new Sovereign Weapons Main Hand and Awakening, plus 5 Man Shrine bosses. After that, we'll of course talk about the Termian Beach event coming out, and then we'll talk about the new guild traits, Dekia 2, accessories, plus hardcore seasons. Finally, we'll mention the future of BDO. Land of the Morning Light is going to be a big and main update that they mentioned in the Heidel Ball. This is going to feature the new conclusion for Land of the Morning Light, along with a bunch of story quests and new tales. Most importantly though, they are adding new shrine bosses, a palace management life skill, and new sovereign weapons. The shrine bosses you do with a 5-man party and has bonus rewards if you do it with your guild. What we know now is that the aura we used in the previous Lomo Shrines will give you special bonuses that affect gameplay rather than just stats. This is because we'll be using our real gear in the new shrines instead of no gear. There are two levels of difficulties, but it should be easier than the Ataraxian dungeons. There will be limited revives, no HP recovery skills, and rewards are given once a week like the old shrine bosses. The next thing in Land of the Morning Light is the Palace Management Life Skill that gives you nodes that you can level up and they give unique crafting materials, items, and silver deliverables for NPCs. We don't know the specifics, but it should be mostly automated like nodes, so after you set it up, you just get items that you can sell for silver, along with unique crafting mats. However, after this, the main gear progression they announced was the Sovereign Weapons. The new weapons take either a Black Star plus Flame, two black stars, or a black star and a C20 weapon, and a gem on top of that. They mentioned that the C20 and black star route is going to be the most expensive, but we still don't really know. This new weapon can be enhanced up to 10 levels from pry all the way to deck, but requires exclusive materials that will take time to amass. Enhancements will not be skippable with silver, so we'll assume that there will be some type of daily or grind requirements. The weapon also has 5 additional effects like bonus AP, EVA, DP, Accuracy, and Bonus Percent Damages. These require special reform stones to get. You can choose 5 different effects that suit your playstyle. Higher tier weapons also gain bonus visual effects that can be applied over skins, which is super cool. With the weapons, there are of course new AP brackets. We'll go more in depth about these weapons in the more in depth video, but this is just a quick overview. Next up is a summer event that will take place in both Termian Beach and the underwater Land of the Morning Light Castle. They announced a new outfit that is the first of its kind which has different patterns and visuals that you can change before dying. This is similar to the Shell Bell outfit but there should be more changes and differences. They also announced new accessories like sunglasses and hats. The Shy outfit is still being worked on so that will be released later. Remember that the summer outfit is going to be released on July 10th and we should get the summer event on July 24th. Finally, after Land of the Morning Light and Termian, they announced new things but they have no designated time. The first thing that should come out is specific guild traits. This is a new system that allows guilds to pick either from PvP, PvE, or life skill traits and gain experience for whatever they pick. 
Guilds will then be ranked based on how much points they have compared to other guilds that pick their trait. This system isn't as fleshed out yet, but the basic idea is that if you choose PvP, you can gain points from PvP like winning Node Wars, Siege, Guild League, RBF, or War of Roses, and Arena of Solaire. You can get rewards that are both visual and gameplay related, based on your guild rank. They showed a Black Dragon mount that can be gotten from the top PvP guilds, but there really aren't any specifics. The most important thing is that if you are a higher ranked PvP guild, you can only drop on specific nodes for Node Wars, so there will be some gameplay changes based on your guild rank. Promotions and demotions are going to be a huge deal since that affects which nodes that you can drop on. Again, with guild traits and the next things, there's no determined time of release. Next is a second tier of Dekia Lantern that is made for 750 gear score players, and they can place this lantern in some of the old spots, but there are also new spots like Kadri's, Crescent's, Gyphon, and Miramok Ruins. These mobs will be harder, but will have specific weekly quests that will give big bonuses for people who can do these spots. Next up, they mentioned pretty quickly that there are going to be new accessories called Asadel, which are going to be similar to the Taebaek Belt. These accessories will give special skills that either give HP recovery or Black Spirit Rage recovery. They can of course change in the future and give new skills based on what the video devs decide in the future. Finally, after the Dekia and accessories, they talked about a hardcore PvP season server. You start at level 60 with 230 AP and 280 DP. You can go up to 260 AP and 300 DP. There will be no food or elixirs allowed, but you can use recovery potions. It is going to be similar to Anonymous Arsha where you don't have a family name, party, or chat features. When you die, you're trapped in a jail and can leave after getting enough points, either from waiting or by 1v1ing players for their points. There is of course going to be a ranking system based on how well you do, and of course special cosmetics and rewards. This is all theoretical since there is no release date, but it's a really cool thing to see. After all of that, they of course talked about new optimizations that makes gameplay smoother without changing how the game actually feels. They weren't really specific in what they will change, just that they are working on it. This brings us to the new future regions and things that they said they're going to release, but it's more of a long-term view and not very specific. They talked about releasing Mountain of Eternal Winter 2 and Demon Lands, which is south of Valencia, and should take place completely in a mansion. After we explore all these new lands, we'll have to go into Magnus to be teleported to Historic BDO, where it has similarities to the current BDO world, but with many changes, like Valencia is not a desert, it is covered in trees since that's what it was like in old BDO. It's pretty interesting, but of course these are all long-term things, and we'll have to see how they play out. That's basically it for this TLDR video. This is a lot faster, but I wanted to make a quick rundown before I make my longer form videos talking more in depth with my own opinions. This entire video didn't include most of my opinions or thoughts, so if you want a longer form video with my own thinking and experiences, that video will be released soon and will of course be linked to this video. I hope you all enjoyed this faster rundown, and I hope to see you all next time.